So this is a um, video in which I'll show you how to use Olama in CoCalc with a GPU. Okay, I'm signed into CoCalc.com. Going to visit my list of projects. And I have one called CoCalc Demos, so I'll open that. Now I'm going to create, because I want to use a GPU, I'm going to create a server with a GPU. So I'll click Create Compute Server, and I'm going to use Olama. Let me choose a funner color. I would like to have a GPU. I'm going to select an L4 GPU because it has 24 gigabytes of memory, and they're really fast. They're a 2023 GPU, very modern architecture, but also, as you can see, very affordable. And in fact, if I choose a different location in the world, let's say US Central, it's only 30 cents per hour. Also, I'm going to increase the disk space a little. And because I really want a lot of disk space, um, I don't know, I'll go with 60. It's easy to add more even while the machine's running, so this will be fine. OK, let's start the compute server. Oh, wait, whoops, one key thing. I need to choose the Olama image rather than PyTorch because I want to use Olama. This image um, comes pre-installed with Olama and also with the Olama web UI. And because I'll have the web UI, I'm going to have a custom domain name. So I'll call it Olama Demo. That way I'll be able to visit this URL and get my own Olama that's running. And don't worry, it's authenticated with this auth token. So not anyone can use it, just me, or anyone I share the link with. All right, so we've just created our server, and now we're giving a shot to start it up. This is a preemptible server, or a spot instance. This is a spot instance, so it's uh, potentially much, much cheaper than a normal instance. However, uh, one issue with the spot instance is it might not be available. So we just have to give it a shot and see if it appears. If it doesn't work, we can always choose a different location or just try again. There's very likely to be spot instances, uh, lots of them available somewhere in the world. And it really doesn't matter where we um, start our server. While I'm waiting for this to start up, I'm going to create a Linux terminal, which I'll set to run on this server. That lets me directly run Olama on the command line, which lets me um, see precise stats as models get downloaded, etc. And our server did start up in just under a minute. So here, let me start a terminal. So I'll call it Olama Linux Terminal. And I'm going to set it to run on Olama, on the Olama compute server. But we still have to wait for the compute server to finish starting up for us to um, use our terminal or visit this link and have it work. So let's wait a minute. Excellent. So our compute server has started up in about two minutes total time, and we're running on it. Let's check that we have a GPU. We do. See, it has a nice L4 GPU. Um, Look at the processes. You'll see that Olama is running right here, Olama serve, and there's also Olama Web UI running. To visit Olama Web UI, you can click on servers and click on this link, or in the terminal, you can click on this bar on the top and then click on the same link. Notice that there's a little auth token in the URL, so that's secret. I can share this link with people, but if somebody tries to visit um, just Olama demo co -calc dot cloud and they don't know the authentication token, let's see what happens. They just see this box and they have to type in an authentication token. So they could do that or they can visit the URL with the auth token if you want to share with this with other people. I don't have any models yet, so what I'm going to do is download a model and then we'll be able to use it. So I'm going to download the model using um, the terminal, just so we can see really quickly everything that happens. Um, it's really nice to be able to just see the little progress meter, etc. 
So here we go. Orca Mini is one of the smallest Llama model, O Llama hosted models. So there we go. And if we just wait, this takes under a minute to uh, download, check some, decompress, and make available. Also, if you want to kind of see what's going on um, on the machine, you can always uh, open another terminal while this is running. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to my Olama server tab and then just try out Orca Mini. So now I can, so it's not there, I need to refresh because this thing doesn't know that it's there, but there, now it's available. So I can say, hello, Orca Mini, do you know what CoCalc is? This is a very tiny model, so you should not expect much from it. So right now on the server, it's loading the model into memory and now it's running it. Uh, that is not what CoCalc is, but hey, it's a good guess. Okay, if we look at NVIDIA SMI, we'll see that there's a Olama running on the GPU and it's using 3.5 gigabytes of GPU memory. Cool. Uh, let's pull another model just for fun. So if you go to the Olama inter or the Olama Web UI interface and then click on settings, you can see that they have a place where you can put in other models that you'd like to use. Um, and they also have a place to browse models. So let's try that. So let's click here to browse models. So here's the library. Um, there's a model here called Wizard Math. Sounds fun, as I'm a mathematician. And um, here we are. So when you look at any of these pages, click on tags, and that tells you all the possible types and sizes of models that you can download. So let's try downloading the, um, let's do the 13B model. This one's 7.4 gigabytes. It will easily fit into the 24 gigabyte GPU memory we have, run quickly, but it's large enough to maybe be interesting. So let's just copy that. So we can download the model either by putting it in here, or we can go to the terminal and do olama run and then give the model, uh, or olama pull to grab the model without running it. I'm just gonna do that in the terminal but you can do it in either place. I think the terminal tends to give you a little bit more um, real-time feedback, and so it's nice to have. As I mentioned, if you split the terminal with that, you can make another terminal on your server, and in the other terminal, you can do things like look at top and just see what's going on. So you can see that Olam is running using a little over 100 CPU. There's also log files. If you go to var log, supervisor, then here's where all the log files are. For example, if we do tail, um, so we're gonna do tail dash F Olama standard out. You can see additional information about what's going on with errors and downloads and all kinds of other things and web requests. Like if I go to the Olama page and I refresh the page, there's some web requests that are made and those end up making requests to the API and then additional things get listed here. So that's what this log tells you about. Okay, so we just have to wait a little bit. It's downloaded almost the entire um, wizard math 13b model. And notice it's been working for about a minute. So um, by the way, the way CoCalc compute servers work, you can see that this is costing 31 cents per hour. And of course, we've only been using this for, looks like six minutes. So we've you know spent like five cents. Um, also, in terms of network, all the there's no cost at all to download any models from the outside. The only network costs are for data that leaves the compute server. Um, and of course, very little data leaves the compute server for this application, unless you're going to train a model and then upload it somewhere else. Okay, so now it's verifying the SHA-256 digest. This um, takes some CPU and takes a while. So it's using the CPU pretty seriously, as you can see, and also using lots of memory. And so here you really just need to wait a bit. Oh, now it's done. So that entire process took just like two or three minutes. And now when we go back over here, refresh the browser so it sees the latest uh, versions of the models. We can do new chat. And now we have two models to choose from, Orca Mini and Wizard Math 13B. So let's give it a shot. So when you ask your first question, it has to load the model 
into memory. So let's try a thing that stumped chat GPT-3.5 for a while. Is the number 51 a prime number? It's not a prime number because it's divisible by three. But let's see what it says. So right now, it just started loading the model into the GPU. Again, we can go over to the compute server and kind of get a sense of exactly what's going on in real time. So you can see that uh, that little D means it's not being able to do very much because it depends on other things happening, like reading from disk um, and the R as well. If we do NVIDIA SMI, we can see the status of our GPU and you can see that, um, well, it should be loading data from the disk into memory and then putting it in the GPU so that I can serve it. Ah, see, it's loaded 10 gigabytes of our large language model into the GPU and hopefully it's running it. Oh yeah, it is. Look, so let's see what happened. So it has all these steps and it comes to the, for the incorrect conclusion that 51 is a prime number, which is kind of weird because if we look closely, um, it actually wrote the prime factorization down. Um, actually, no, it didn't. It wrote a weird... Anyways, these are not very large language models. <laughs> it did kind of notice that 3 divides 51, but it made the other factor 7. I don't know. Um, math is apparently difficult for these models. Um, but I bet I can do basic arithmetic. What is 17 times 3? Hey, I got 51. Cool. And it nicely typesets it. So uh, this is great. So um, we've, we're done. I mean, we've uh, used Olama. Uh, you know, you can download lots of different models as I've, uh, as you, you know, by searching the site. And when you're done, you have two options. One, you can take your compute server and just turn it off with stop. You will have to pay for the disk because you know, you're storing lots of disk on the cloud, but it's pretty cheap. It's uh, in this case for a 60 gigabyte disk, it costs two cents per hour, which amounts to $12 and 80 cents per month. So you can just leave all your data there. Um, if you're going to download a lot of data, use a um, non SSD it's much cheaper, it's also available, and so I mean, then it would only be, it would be a little bit less. The other option, uh, if you're okay with re-downloading the data when you're going to use the model, is to click Edit, and then you can click Deprovision. And when you do this, it just deletes the underlying disk and stops the virtual machine. So let's do that. Okay, so I click Deprovision, everything's being cleaned up. It keeps the configuration around so I can easily start it up again later, but I'll have to re-download the model. Okay, thank you.